for an evening that costs nothing but time and attention. One, two, three, four, five. A warm summer's evening in New York Central Park. In the midst of a bustling city. How do we know when to go? A decidedly civilized event is about to take place. Come on, let's go. It's opera. Free opera. Joseph Adeo and Michael Corvino are performing in Verdi's rarely staged Stefalia. Just another wonder we New Yorkers take for granted. We've had free opera in the parks for 25 years now. Were it not for maestro Vincent La Selva, though, we wouldn't hear a note. I try to communicate what Verdi felt, or Puccini, or Mozart, or Beethoven, or whoever it is I do. That's, that the music has to be great, and that's what keeps me going. La Selva is artistic director of New York's Grand Opera. With great singers and a minuscule budget, he somehow manages to achieve his goal of bringing important music to anyone who wants to hear it, especially the operas of Verdi. It's for the people, and, and Verdi speaks to everybody. Verdi speaks to the world. Verdi speaks to everybody if they give him a chance and, and, and uh, listen. Verdi is the music, and La Selva is the missionary. He seeks converts, passionate in his belief that music can change people's lives. So what they're getting is uplifting feeling, experience of hearing an opera of, of, of a great composer like Verdi for the first time, free in the middle of Central Park. What more could you ask for? What more indeed? In the battle to win the hearts and ears of the people, Albert Bergeret, the Grand Opera stage director, is La Selva's aide-de-camp. Opera was meant to be seen by the people. They were writing what, what we would see on TV now. This was the sitcom of the 19th century, or the dramatic, the one-hour dramatic television special. The roots of of the 19th century. These were not meant to be done in a rarefied form that only the people with great education and high aesthetic tastes could appreciate. They, are, they can be appreciated by people who open their minds to them on a popular level. But I've got like good vibes, like it's just gonna be really a good time and it's not a stuffy old art form. That Every single performance is current and it's now and it's happening. You know, like the chorus is just like bam, 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 really exciting. And it just seems, you know, I don't know, I just get like a rush when I, when I come to this. It's just a lot of fun. And in this, this setting, it's very non-confrontational, and it's, it's not like in like an opera house where like I probably, and maybe some other people might, might not fit in. So that people don't feel, oh, I can't go there because it's the opera. You have to feel, this is a nice thing, this is a fun thing. Tonight he uh, was able to get uh, Rigoletto out of a baker's kid from New Jersey. No, I'm Tenor Antonio Buonaro plays the Duke in Rigoletto. I, I could remember growing up listening to opera on the radio and uh, making sfogliatelle and pastacciotte and cannolis and singing, and the head baker goes, Shut up, no singing in the shop. And now uh, I'm allowed to sing. <laughs> So I wait for them? No, you start. Okay. You start and they come in. The third scene... Critics have called La Selva both a miracle worker... He enters with a tray. Yes, so ...and a madman. And when does the, when does the cacciatore come in? Wrestling an opera into performance shape in a day or two... ...and then always worrying if the weather will hold. Damn it, when I need them, they leave. Who else would go out and do a performance on one rehearsal? Only Vincent would. And it's because he has the gift to do it, and he has the foresight to, to go for the moon and go for the gold. He's a magnet. Personnel manager Yolanda Antoine. He asks you to do something and you do it. I need jam. Staging an opera is rarely simple. Get jam. And doing Get jam. it outdoors in Central Park can be troublesome. Can't they send somebody down? You've got wind. You've got sound being blown away. You've got drops flapping in a breeze. You've got 
tell me how you're going to mask the world from the backstage area. It's the whole park. <laughs> During the July performance of Verdi's Louisa Miller, the lights went out, the music stopped, and soprano Amelia Darcy was left to pray the show would go on. It did. Verdi said, no matter what disappointments, hardships, failures, what you do, you just put your hand over your heart and you keep going. And so La Selva perseveres. The Grand Opera will perform all 28 of Verdi's operas, four a year, one performance each over seven years in chronological order. This summer, Stefelio, a tale of revenge and adultery in a Protestant sect. Never heard it before? That's okay. No one else had either. Vincent La Selva, of course, tracked it down was smuggled out of Italy and handed to me in the West 72nd Street subway station and I put four professional copyists on it for one month straight, 24 hours a day with big magnifying glasses. That's how difficult it was to see the, the score. So that's how Stefano took birth in America in 1976. All 28 of Verdi's operas have greatness in them. And this is a terrific opera, really wonderful opera. Lost for over a hundred years. It's so exciting that it's a continuous series going through all these years of chronological order, so you're building up to something. And you're really getting a sense of the history. And thanks to La Selva's tutorship, that history is being sung not only by experienced performers, but up-and-comers as well. So without this, I'm not sure where I would be. Um, I'd still be studying, I would still be plugging away, trying to get jobs, auditioning. And when I look out at the audience, smiling and listening to the music, that does more for me, I think, than anything else that I do the other 364 days of the year. One day we were rehearsing Puccini's La Boheme in Co-op City, and a security guard stopped at the door and listened for like a half an hour. And he said to me, what was that? That's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life. What was that? And I said to myself, this is why we do this, so that someone who has never had this experience can say, that was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh!